Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today with Chef David Banks of Banks Seafood Kitchen and Raw Bar in Wilmington, Delaware. Nicole, how are you? How are you? It's great to have you here. Great to see you again. Always. Awesome. We've got a new uh, new logo on the I know, it looks here. awesome. I've, uh, I've started the, my own restaurant. We've taken it over. Uh, we started some pretty uh, aggressive things. Uh, still dynamic seafood, still fresh, still the same great view. Uh, but a little bit more attention to uh, service detail and the, and the beverage program is being paid, which we're progressing nicely. I love it. We're so happy for you. And I see we have a nice spread of ingredients here. So what are we making today? We, we're doing something that's on the menu. It's uh, one of our uh, local Sea Scout dishes. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a couple of twists and turns to it. If you would be so kind as to do all the work for me today, sure thing. that would be great. Uh, so we're going to do a, a cherry emulsion. Uh, toasted cornbread uh, croutons mm. and so let's get started let's on this it. a little bit um, trying to use all the product butternut, butternut squash, squash, squash those the, seeds? the seeds from the squash this nice cherry emulsion is simple we're gonna let you come to my right okay and you're gonna run the machinery here so we've we've got the cherries okay. and it's a sun-dried cherry uh, the recipes that I that I brought for this is very easy to do. Okay. Anybody can do it. You don't need a whole lot of different equipment. I will save this liquor. This is cherry liquor, no booze involved. Mm -hmm. What it is is hot water, just rehydrating those cherries. We're going to save that so that we can okay. uh, just put a lot that, of flavor in there. Put that into there. All and of that. Go ahead. Okay. And that'll adjust uh, when we get too tight or, or or not tight enough. We'll figure it out as we start to blend it. The Vitamix uh, or any kind of blender. Works good. We drop some little raw shallots, a little white balsamic vinegar, right? Any little, reason you use white? Is that little for the honey, color? A little sweetness, okay. and it doesn't turn it color, and it's just uh, probably the one I felt like at the moment. <laughs> when we, our, my cooking style is a little spontaneous, and with that, with that, <laughs> It's a double-edged sword because we have to be consistent. I'm only as good as the people around me. Those guys uh, and girls just execute excellently. They listen. We are hyper-focused right That's now. fantastic. Hyper-focused right now on, uh, on cuisine. A little blend. Okay, so it's starting to... We give it a little break then if we need to... And are you looking to get this really fine and ba smooth? Baby food smooth. Okay. And the Vitamix is in Turkey. It's a little intuitive, which is actually really, uh, at first it's like, why did it just accelerate? Right. And then you go, I'm really glad it's smarter than me. <laughs> so, this, so you want this to be pretty thick? That, is that why you're not adding in more liquid? I will in a minute. I want to okay. get it cut up pretty good here. Okay. It'll get into it up here. I put a little honey, I put a little vinegar in it already. I'm going to take, kids don't try this at home. So stand back. If we have a disaster, <laughs> it'll grab it in a minute. So what that's telling me is it needs a little bit more, a little bit a little more, more liquid. liquid. Okay. And we're gonna dash a little more, pour a little bit more of the honey in there. Sure. A little right. more, is that good? That's good. Okay. Yep, that's gonna be just right. We'll try it again. You're scared of it, aren't you? I don't wanna wear it, that's all. <laughs> I don't want you to wear it either. Balsamic, honey, cherries. And we are delicious. Spot on. Perfect. I'll take your word for it. A little sweet, yeah. You'll <laughs> you'll get it at the end. I sure will. If you can take that and just it pour it. It smells amazing. Pour some into that squirt bottle. We're through okay. with the noise. And we'll do a couple other steps. We'll return with more from the Chef's Kitchen. 
We now return to The Chef's Kitchen. Simple cornbread. I make the cornbread, the recipe is made for you, um, and I let it get a little stale. Okay, so just for the croutons. <laughs> it's okay. It's now do you, uh, I'm gonna taste a little, little okay. nibble. Do you yeah. put sugar in your cornbread? A little bit. Nice. A little bit of sugar in the cornbread, and then um, we're just gonna make some. I love cornbread. Some croutons. And you get just a little itty bit of oil on there. So this is a really light eating dish. The richness of these scallops uh, really tell the story. Okay. Pretty light dish. Cherry, scallops, sage. Nice flavors. Little, little, yeah, little, uh, little textural crunch here. You really have a way of so, pairing ingredients together that not a lot of people do. I, you know, it, it kind of is the way I like to eat and the way I like to make it feel. And I think that uh, that translates into uh, something exciting yeah, definitely. Uh, for, for people who enjoy cooking but wouldn't have thought of it that way. And uh, uh, there's no, no original ideas, nothing unique. Here's, here's going to be the trick. I got this yep. one. Okay. You go ahead and put it in that oven, this right here. You and got it. Burn them all you want. Seeds are just a little bit of butter. Okay. The carpaccio, what I do is I just steam it really lightly uh, or mm. blanch it or whatever you, whatever you want to do. In the restaurant, I just put it in the steamer. But nice. So paper thin. Paper thin. I'm going to go a little bit thinner than that. Okay. Definitely helps to have a tool like this. It does. It does. Uh, or in the restaurant, we use a meat slicer. Even better. Which is, you know, that way it doesn't matter what size the, uh, sure. the squash is because this one has its... Yeah, you're kind has of its limitations. So not too, too thin. I guess you could do this with a knife if you really wanted you to. You could. You could do it with a knife. Hard and, to get nice and, and even slices. And I like doing it this way because we're going to, we don't want to see through it. It still is technically the vegetable to sure. the dish. So we want to make it be the vegetable to the dish. And so that is done. A little bit of butter. So you're just going to toast these seeds? Yeah. Just like we're you gonna, pumpkin seeds. We're going to put just a little. Now I boiled these off, okay. which cleans them and softens them just a little mm -hmm. bit. And you're going to take these two ingredients right there with the spoons in it. That's sugar okay. and cayenne pepper. And that's going to, and you can uh, shake those up, put a little sugar in, and it gets cooked. Just a little and bit. Then, and then the cayenne pepper, uh, just a little bit. That enough? Uh, we'll see. It looks good. Let it cook. You're good. Yeah, not too sweet because the cayenne's going to bounce off. This is for the sage leaves. And then just a little bit of cayenne. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can always add it, but we can't take it out. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Go ahead. There you go. So you got sugar and cayenne in it. So we're kind of candying these. Uh, yeah, spicing them, candying yeah. them. If you uh, you got egg whites and things, you might have that more candied, sure. candied thing. These are just kind of spiced. I'm going to probably tell you to spice them up a little more cayenne because okay. I can smell the sugar uh, from, and you verify it because you're good. So let's talk about the beer and wine program and, and really the whole bar program that you have over at the restaurant. You're doing some really wonderful things, a lot of fantastic microbrews and local breweries. Tell me a little bit more about that. We have a, a, a great team at the bar. They've, they've been our uh, superstars for yeah. years, and I plan on them uh, staying with me for years. They've got no reason to go anywhere. <laughs> They're treated very well. Oh, why would and they want they, to? And they um, are taking advantage of a dogfish uh, brewery local out of southern Delaware, uh, Two Stones Pub, a local brewery, uh, Yingling, a mm -hmm. local brewery. Of uh, 12 uh, tap handles going on nice. and, and bottled beers and micro brews. Got a great, uh, what we call a decompression happy hour uh, that is a second happy hour to us. Uh, this decompression happy hour is 8.30 at night to close Monday through Friday. Gotta love that. So if you're working till 6, 6.30, right. 7 and you miss happy hour. It's hard to make happy you, hours You can people. get home, do what you do, and then come and decompress with us. Half price drafts. Nice. And no wine or spirits in you that some, happy hour, just drafts. Some food specials too. And uh, and some uh, discounted or half price 
food specials as well. Nice. So we've got, these are spicy. Smells good. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to put them on that drain pan right there. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We now return to The Chef's Kitchen. Now this carpaccio seems like it's, it's, it's ready. happens pretty quick. It does happen pretty quick and we're going to take those out and put them on had a, one of these. Or? Uh, you know what, that little teeny saute pan under it and we're going to drop them. If you would squeeze in a little lemon sure. right into that, right? And a little bit of, uh, you see the lemon, and then a little bit of the extra virgin olive oil there, and a little salt, and a little white pepper. All right. All right. Simple. That is, that is right. So here, and we've got our sage leaves. I'm going to fry the sage leaves up. Heat going here on that, and so this is there. You know, it's a small little dish, uh, but it's filled with texture and it's filled with flavor and it's filled with freshness. So nice. Croutons I'm, I'm going to call that good. They look nice. Yeah, I'm going to call that. Do you want me to good. drain some of this extra liquid off of here, or do you want that in there? Uh, leave that in there okay. for just a minute. Did you put the Evo in it? Not yet. Yeah, put the Evo in it, and I and just broke here? one, and I don't want to break okay. anymore. Yeah, yeah. So just, just let it sit. And let it kind of marinate a perfect. bit. Great. And we are croutoned up. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I would do a larger amount at a time in the restaurant, uh, but uh, today... It's, it's all just, we need. Just you and I. That's right. And that works out good. Oh, so we're going to fry the sage leaves. Nice. Yeah, we'll make them crispy. Yeah, there we go. And we're going to drain it right out on the paper towel. Same, we're going to share the plate. Okay. With the uh, with we seeds. Can do that. So if you scooch them on down, we're going to be just fine. You can fry anything. Uh, basil fries good. Mm -hmm. Sage fries good. I say anything, but those two come to mind. Sure. Um, Any kind of herb? Yeah, leaf. I think those two come to mind pretty good. So we're just going to. So they happen them. pretty quick. They happen pretty quick. And they do what they do and they won't take too long. Perfect. And that's just going to be a little garnish. That is. That's actually going to be a garnish on the plate. Right. And when, uh, when I took over the restaurant on my own, uh, I, I'm focused on really, really strong and strict execution. Not mm -hmm. strict in a mean way, but strict in a very attentive way. Sure. Uh, all of all of the people that work for me are are hyper focused on quality uh, and and timing, mm -hmm. and we're doing things that are just world class, right in Wilmington, Delaware. Our our view is great. Our our uh, interior design is, is spectacular. It's a beautiful place. You could transplant this restaurant to any city in the world, and, and I stand by that. And I would have to agree and we, with you. And we keep it up, and we, we're clean, and we're organized. Now let's talk about these scallops, because they are beauties. Uh, are these U8s, U10s? That is a, that is a U10 scallop. Okay. It's, a, it's a, almost always I'm able to source from... Uh, the Barnegat Light area, New mm -hmm. Jersey, Cape May, the Atlantic Shores. These are local it's my neck of the diver woods. scallops, and they are. They really are gorgeous. They I mean, are they gorgeous, and, they, and they're uh, they're produced. They're performing well, and and I say that what that means is a little tip and technique of this. If you ever get a scallop and it has a little milky substance in the container, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a true dry scallop. Something's compromised it either, I hate to say a chemical, but something's mm -hmm. compromised it, and then it is not a true dry scallop. When you get a true dry scallop, you will see that it will caramelize, and I hope to God on the show that these caramelize <laughs> well. And uh, so, but a little prayer doesn't hurt. What's the secret to getting that caramelization on a Patience. scallop? Patience. Okay. Patience. Period. Great question. Patience. That was a very quick answer, hot, too. Hot, hot, hot pan 
oil, steel pan, the right tool, uh, cast iron works, steel mm -hmm. pan works. Copper doesn't really pan sear very well. Really? Interesting. No, it doesn't. In fact, copper doesn't perform well at high, high, high heat. Okay. Uh, copper performs well at a medium uh, to high heat because it conducts. It's as hot here on the edge of a copper as it is right there on that flame. That's the beauty of cooking with mm -hmm. copper. Nice and even. Particularly with sauces and stocks. Okay. Those, uh, it is very even. Good steel pan and patience. All right. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We now return to The Chef's Kitchen. So if we go. So you want to hear that sizzle. You want to hear that sizzle and you'll see And uh, another thing, don't overcrowd the pan. Okay, don't squeeze too many in there. Don't try to jam them <laughs> in, because they, they will sweat themselves, and that, that'll uh, inhibit the, the browning of it that's, that's going on. Okay. Where did you get the idea for something like this? You know, uh, one of my guys was messing around with it. He's thinking, how do we use butternut squash? And it's seasonal at that mm -hmm. time. So we just came up with the vision of the plate first, and then how do you make that? Come to reality. Such a beautiful color. So it is. A, it yeah, is a great color. I mean, so the less we can do with it, the better off it is. So we'll do a descending size drops. Nice. And what great color! I mean, the butternut squash, but then this cherry puree is beautiful. And again, this is simple stuff. This mm -hmm. is not rocket science. This is a squirt bottle and, and stuff. <laughs> right. You know, so you, you can do this at home. You can, if you care to, or you can zigzag, or you can squirt, or you can do whatever you yeah. want. You can go Jackson Pollock on that thing <laughs> and just splash all sorts of colors. And uh, and that's good. You see the edge on that that's occurring? Yeah, you can start to see them and, and we will take a peek. And I think it's too soon, but I'll show you what, okay. what too soon looks like. See that? Not quite there too yet. Too soon. Okay. Be patient. Uh, we could crank it up a little bit if we want, but I'll let it just go. Okay. This, I brown them on both sides. Mm -hmm. Brown them on both sides. It is completely done when it's brown on the second All side. All right. Now, what is this? Because I've been this, looking at this the entire time we've been shooting. The, this is the so secret ingredient. Intrigued. This is something that we just keep around, and we just call it green oil. Okay. So anything that we might uh, have as an ingredient that's green, we might have spinach or uh, watercress or scallion or parsley or remnants of all of all of those, mm -hmm. and then we'll just make a green oil. And quite simply, that's just to kind of just for to color. color to play. You want to turn those? Sure. I'm going to tell you they're perfect. Let's see. You tell me. Patient. I like it. That's that's like it. Pansier scallop. That's it. Word on the street is that I've got a great knack with seafood. I always have. Uh, I've been doing this a long time. My passion for creativity and seafood and in a simplistic way. Mm -hmm. So in reality, it's squash, cornbread crouton, some cherry jam, and scallop. We're done. It's just, simple. Just, it, is, it is pretty simple. So if we take that and we'll maybe just put a sage leaf there. It's like a... And we might a, put a... Sage leaf over painting. here, and we're really work of art. We're almost there. We'll, don't forget our texture of seeds, and there, you don't have to get all exact on it. So I just like scatter them and, around. And these are good because you yeah. find you'll find this in, in a fork bowl, and you go, "Ooh, that worked." <laughs> I'm going to take the scallops. Okay. So this dish is on the menu at Bank Seafood Kitchen and Raw Bar, correct? It is correct. We, we have it on, and it's a uh, it's quickly becoming one of our standard items. A really nice portion. It's a very nice portion. That's good. I, I covered up the carpaccio just a little bit. And is this how many you typically serve? I do. A four or five. When they're this size, four is mm -hmm. ample. Uh, pure weight there is about six and a half to seven ounces. They're about an ounce and a half a scallop, give or take. These are good, large scallops. It's a nice that portion. One, that one was a little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah, so if I had smaller ones like that, I'd give you, you probably five. five. All right. We'll give you a little bit of the green oil in there, and that can go in a squirt bottle, too. Okay. Or 
You can just, just add, add that pop of green. You can just do it right around, and that's people. Uh, and it, it, it tastes good. It's appropriate. It's not yeah. just for color. It's got a little bit of the sort of herbaceousness. It, it does. It has a, it has some character to it, so that is good. Well, these look fabulous. I'm very excited to dig in. Won't you join me? Flavor combination is nice and light. Actually, mm. pretty healthy uh, dish, except for cornbread croutons. Yeah, it's very healthy. I think. So, yeah. Mm. Oh my goodness. That cherry puree. Wow. Mm hmm. Did you get a scalp? All right. Wow, mm -hmm. you are fast. Okay. I don't waste any time. So. Mm. Brown on both sides. Still a little opaque inside, right? So it's it's not overcooked. It won't be rubbery. Don't even need a knife for them. I mean, they mm -hmm. cut like butter. Mm. Mm. Carpaccio. Everything. Still. Got a little resistance to it. No, it's really nice. It's light, it's fresh, it's delicate, mm -hmm. but it's still, you know, fall, wintry. It's perfect for the season. This is amazing. Jeff, thank what you so much what for being what on else the can show we say? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm ready to take another bite, but <laughs> awesome. we'll come and see you at Bank Seafood Kitchen and Raw Bar very soon. Hope so. Thank you. The recipe that I did today is really what we try to achieve. We are inspired by the food and we also are dedicated to what is going on.